Hello and welcome to Mastering Statistics Volume Number 2. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Very excited to teach this class because here we're going to pick up where we left off with Mastering Statistics Volume 1 and continue marching through these topics step by step with very understandable, easy to approach problems uh, and build your skills through lectures but also through solving problems and hopefully practical real world sort of ideas. Um, now, you know, lots of people have problems with statistics, and as I've said before in Volume 1, I just need to make sure you understand none of this stuff is hard, but a lot of it boils down to definitions, making sure you un understand the terminology so that whenever you are confronted with a problem, you're not uh, scratching your head over the definitions, and also having that practical experience of solving problems so that whenever you, you go to an exam or test, you're not left you know, wondering what to do. Now, um, in this section, this is a introduction. So we're not going to really solve really many problems here, but I want to set the stage for what we're going to do. In Mastering Statistics Volume 2, I said we're picking up where we left off in Volume 1. I need to make sure everybody watching this has already viewed, understood, and absorbed everything in Statistics Volume 1 that I have because it's all going to dovetail in with what we're going to learn here. Uh, we learned a lot of things in Volume 1. We learned about samples and populations and uh, mean and standard deviation and things like that. And we learned about quartiles and z-scores and things that are all going to be useful here. But if I had to pick just a couple of things that I really thought were the most important things in Volume 1 for you to really understand that's going to be with us through the whole course here, that would be the concept of the mean in uh, the concept of the standard deviation. So if you need review on what those are, go and get, get that review. Um, we're going to be doing a lot with that here and all throughout statistics. So the big picture is the mean is the kind of the average value of your data set or your population. And the standard deviation gives you the spread of that data. So if you have grades in a classroom, you have a mean grade, which is the average value, and then you have the standard deviation, which is a measure of telling you how spread apart those grades are around the mean. So if you have a very wide or large standard deviation, you might have grades far away from the mean, meaning your class, you had some low performers and some very high performers spread apart from your mean. But if you have a very low or small standard deviation, then all of your grades are compacted and centered very closely around your mean. So everyone did kind of the same uh, centered around the mean. Go back and review those concepts if they're not 100% uh, clear. And make sure you've watched everything in Mastering Statistics Volume 1. The uh, other thing I want to mention is that from here on out in statistics, we're going to be talking a fair amount about probability. Uh, in most statistics courses, you're going to have to learn some probability in there somewhere. Um, in fact, I've actually already taught a lot of probability in my uh, probability tutor that I already have out there. I want to make absolutely clear as I, as I go through this course to tell you that I'm not going to be reviewing tons of probability theory in this class. I've already done that stuff. So if you are rusty in probability, if you don't know what probability is, if you don't know what a dependent event is, if you don't know what the you know addition prob pro uh, properties of probabilities are, you probably need to go review my probability tutor. Please take time to do that now because you're going to have questions that aren't really hard um, if, you, if you have avoided probability and you're just kind of struggling through statistics. They're not, it's not hard, but you have to understand the material. So make sure you've watched my probability tutor, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, at a 100,000 foot level, uh, the basic idea of a probability is giving you a, the chance of some event happening. That's basically what the probability tutor is going to teach you. There are lots of different sub cases, right? Um, but that's the basic idea. So I am going to give you a five minute overview of probability here, but just keep in mind there's a lot more to probability theory that you really kind of need to know and I've already taught that. So um, first thing you need to remember is that probability can be expressed as a fraction or as a decimal. So as a simple example, we've all flipped a coin, right? We know there's heads and then there's tails. And we already know from just kind of everyday life that flipping a coin is a 50-50 kind of thing. 50% chance lands on heads, 50% chance lands on tails. That's if the coin is perfectly balanced, everything's perfectly even between heads and tails. Then if I flip it a thousand times, then 500 times I expect to get heads and 500 times I expect to get tails. Now as I repeat that experiment, 
more and more and more, then of course it gets closer to 50-50. If I only flip the coin twice, of course I can get two heads in a row. So that's kind of the idea of probability. You have to do the experiment, flipping the coin in this case, a bunch of times in order to get the actual probability of 50% to show up. So we might want to flip that coin a million times and then 500,000 times roughly will be heads and then another 500,000 times will be tails. So when we express that as a probability in terms of flipping heads and tails of a coin, then we say something like the probability of getting heads, let's say. So I'll put the probability of, let's say, getting heads, right, that's what I'm denoting here, is going to be one half. The reason we know it's one half is because, and you'll learn this in the probability course, the one on top is the um, outcome I care about. In other words, getting a heads. So I'll put heads here. So when I flip a coin one time, there's only one way in which I can get heads. But the bottom, the denominator of the fractions, is the total outcomes. Okay? So it's the number of ways in which I can get heads over the number of ways in, in which the experiment can end. So I can get heads or tails. So there's two possible outcomes there. So it comes out to one half. Now, of course, you all know from basic math that this is basically equal to 0 0.5. So this is kind of what I'm kind of refreshing your memory. Probability can be displayed as a fraction or as a decimal. So when you look in your statistics book, your textbook, whatever you're using for your class, your, your professor, or my lessons, anytime you see a probability, sometimes you might see it represented as a fraction, and sometimes you might see it represented as a decimal. Just keep that in mind. And it's the same sort of thing. You know, we've all played cards. So we have 52 cards in a deck. Those are the total number of outcomes. If I want to get the ace of spades, there's only one ace of spades in that deck. So the outcome I care about, if I want to find the probability of pulling an ace of spades would be 1 over 52 because there's one card of that type divided by 52 possible outcomes and if you divide 1 by 52 you can get a small number there for a decimal so probability can be decimals or fractions so if I wanted to take this idea further uh, and just kind of drill it in then I can show you that the idea of probability the idea of probably can start on a scale that begins with zero, which means it will not happen, and it can end at a scale of one, which means it definitely will happen. Now in our case, we got 0 0.5. Where does 0 0.5 land? 0 0.5 is right between zero and one. So that means uh, half of the time, you cut this whole thing in half, half of the time I'm gonna get heads, and the other half of the time I'm not. That's basically what that means. Now. I'm trying to show you, a lot of people are surprised when they first learn probability or statistics that probability is always expressed as a decimal like that. So I might say probability is 0 0.50, or I might say probability is 0.35, that's a lower probability. Or I might say the probability is 0.95, which is real close to 1. 1 means it's definitely going to happen. Um, but you know, a lot of us have experience with some probability because we always watch the news and the weather forecast. And we always see a 35% chance of rain, or a 75% chance of rain, or a 90, or sometimes even a 100% chance of rain. If you have a hurricane coming, it's going to be a 100% chance of rain because it is going to rain. So even though probability in this class, and in most classes are going to be, in all classes, are going to be expressed as a decimal, sometimes you'll see it expressed as a uh, percentage. So this, fifth, this 0.5, if you multiply by 100, you just shift the decimal place uh, two spots and you get 50%. Of course, zero becomes zero percent. And then if you multiply this by 100, you get 100%. So this scale here, zero percent, 50 percent, 100 percent, that's what you see for the weather forecast. 35 percent chance of rain. But keep in mind that when they tell you it's 35 percent chance of rain, that's 0.35 probability. So I'm just trying to um, throw some things out there, refresh your memory, get the juices flowing a little bit with the idea of probability. If you see a 0.1 probability, that's pretty low. See a 0.8 or a 0.9 probability, that's pretty high. And if you see anything on the edges like 0 or 1, that's definitely not happening or definitely uh, happening. But even though I'm giving you this quick, quick primer of the idea behind probability, I'm just kind of refreshing your memory, giving you some basic information, but there's a whole lot more to solving probability problems than what I've got here. These are some simple ideas, but when you go and study my probability lessons, which I've already released a long time ago, you'll learn about problems where they're a little more complicated than that. What happens when you have two events? You know, we call, uh, 
you know, we may have to add probabilities sometimes when we have two events. We might, uh, you know, have conditional events where one event is dependent on another event and then you have to deal with that. So there's certain rules that you deal with on how to add or multiply probabilities together to get the total probability of your problem. So if, you, if, if any of the stuff that I'm saying about addition rules or anything seems fuzzy, I highly encourage you to go back and watch those lessons on probability that I already have. You also learn about the concept of permutations and combinations in a probability lesson, uh, which also come into play uh, in probability as well. All that stuff is covered uh, before. Also, as you go through your statistics class, there, we're going to be talking in great deal not too long from now about something called a probability distribution. I'm going to explain what that is, so don't worry about that yet. But the most common probability distribution is called the normal distribution. We're going to cover that in great detail here in just the next lesson, the next couple of lessons. So we've got that covered. We're going to dive real deep into that. But sometimes in your statistics class, you may come across something called the binomial distribution, and you might come across something called the Poisson distribution. I know that you may not understand that right now, but you may in your course of your class come across those things. Just keep in mind, I've covered that material again in my previous probability course. So if you come across binomial or Poisson distribution, go look at my previous probability course. That's covered in here. But as far as the bread and butter of statistics, 90% of it is all built on something we call the normal distribution. In fact, the name normal makes it sound like it's, it's the most common one, and it is. When we do surveys of people, when we look at the height of people, when we look at the weight distribution of people, when we look at random samplings of lots and lots of things in the real world, it follows something called the normal probability distribution. And we're going to get into that in great detail in this class. So this is just an introduction to this particular volume. I just wanted to get across to you the basic refresher on probability, the basic ideas, because we're going to need that for the next section. Uh, if you're finding yourself rusty on it, even more than that, go back and look at my previous probability course. Make sure you've watched Statistics Volume 1, very important uh, bedrock uh, information. It dovetails in with this right here. But just keep in mind that as you solve probability problems, it's all doable. It almost always boils down to the definition of what they're talking about and the equations. And once I tie the definition, make those very understandable for you, along with the equations, which I will also make very understandable for you, then you can tackle any of these problems. And consider it a journey. Every single skill that we learn is going to be used in the future. And so that's why it's so important, just like in algebra and calculus and other math classes, to understand the sequence and make sure you really understand everything. So watch my lessons here and my problems, and I encourage you to watch every lesson a second time and work these problems yourself on a separate sheet of paper, even after you've watched me work them you know, myself. That gives you confidence. And then go to your textbook, whatever book you're using, and solve additional problems there. And then as you go through statistics, you'll find that it's very, very easy if you understand the basic concepts. So continue with me on this journey as we go into the next section and beyond where we will learn how to master statistics.